What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, just another PokeTuber, coming at you today with week nine of the BHDL. It's been a long time coming. Last week of the BHDL. Um, well, um, I don't think I need to tell anybody this who's been watching, but um, for those of you who aren't one hundred percent sure, your boy can't make playoffs. Okay, he can't make playoffs. It's kind of been like that for like since like week five. Well, technically week six actually technically week six it's been like since week six so you know hey this last week after this well season's done for us however for the california trailblazers the same cannot be said because fortunately our buddy over here mr pokemaster 88 managed to make playoffs shout out to him good job to him and hopefully he has a pretty good run this season so we're gonna try to end this um season with a bang and just so you guys know, well, I just dropped a draft analysis yesterday, so y'all would, if you've watched it, you've seen it, if you're looking forward to more draft content, it's coming. For those of you who's watching this stuff and you guys, because it's been brought to my attention, some people miss my ranked content. That content will be coming back soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll see. Just, your boy just got a lot of stuff going on in real life, but we know we're trying to keep the content coming as um, frequently or as consistently as we can and regardless I appreciate everybody for tuning in and supporting <clears throat> it really means a lot to your boy but anyway now on to why we're here we're here because your boy the Piedmont uh, the coach of the Piedmont Triad Kickers we're taking on the California Trailblazers whose team consists of well y'all saw the logo so is it is it even a surprise that the first one of this team is a Mios Carada? So, you know, today we have our, you know, Battle of the Protean Mons, you know, Cinderace versus Meowscarada. Here we go. Then we have another starter on the team, Swampert, who's been putting in a lot of work for our guy this season. Then he has the Skarmory, Gen 2, uh, Gen 2 Classic. Love to see it. Hydreigon, the Mon that, in my opinion, is the reason fairy types exist. So, you know, I'm thankful for him and non-thankful at the same time iron moth the coolest but also the mid moth because you know volcarone is better so the wing is worse though but you know we're not going to speak on that then we have terry captain raichu alola the cooler raichu um but you know we don't got to speak on that but anyway this thing can tear into electric water or fairy i'm not sure what to expect because if the gahomi i'm pretty sure it's gonna be terra water because it helps with power ball and it also helps with like surging strikes because if he's not terra water well he just dies to a power ball or just dies to surging strikes is whatever one he prefers to let happen but at the same time i could also see maybe terra fairy to help with uh like the um <clears throat> because if he's terra fairy cinderized if i go for like a sucker punch or a u-turn he resisted um it helps deal with urshifu because he could just blow me up. Granted, he could just psychic me or side shock me too, but I don't know. It kind of just depends on what he wants to do. And it also kind of helps with the uh, Archayudon because he is neutral to fairy. Uh, because if he's not Terra Fairy, I don't think he can touch Archayudon. I can be wrong about that. But um, spoiler alert: Archayudon didn't make. Archayudon did not even make the team this week. Spoiler alert. Um, because of this moth right here who can just end our existence with overheat i'm pretty sure that's what my opponent would try to do anyway so yeah we left the moth we left we left the bridge at home i'll tell you that right now but the rest of his team though he has florges hit my top who can tear it into fighting steel or ghost and if i had to take a guess uh he would probably be terra probably terra I don't know. He could be still a ghost. I don't see. I don't see him being fighting because that doesn't really help with Whimsicott or Sylveon if they were to come. And then I could see Steel because it. I mean, it, uh, he resists like you know. It, it, it helps him kill Whimsicott faster, but at the same time, now you're weaker to Cinderace and Urshifu. So I don't know. So I'm leaning towards him possibly being Terra Ghost. But then it's also just the fact of now I can just sucker punch you, like, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I feel like if anything, Raichu will Terra and Hitmontop won't. Unless only Hitmontop is there and there's no Raichu, so you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> then we have the Frostlass. We got Frostlass, and then we also have Pinchurchin. So I want to say before we, um, before we uh, get into the team preview... 
some of y'all might recall me saying in week nine we was going to have pikachu versus raichu i just want you guys to understand that when i made that statement i thought my season would look a lot different than what it does right now i thought i'd be in such a good enough spot right now that it doesn't matter if i brought pikachu but you know uh that's not how our season turned out and as much as i want to bring pikachu so spoiler pikachu's not coming as much as i want to bring pikachu i want to beat this guy even more so i decided just to swallow my pride on it and just you know come out here and just try to win the game but for those of y'all who want to know i would have brought pikachu i would have definitely brought fake out quick attack terra normal but my opponent has shown me time and time again that he will throw covert cloak on his god dang raichu and just switch things into fake out so it's like yeah i don't think that strat would actually work because without that well, Pikachu can't really beat Raichu, I'm being honest. Like, I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. He can't really win without fake out quick attack. I'm just keeping it real. Um, so, yeah, Pikachu is sitting the bitch. But trust and believe, it's not going to be the last time we draft Pikachu, so it doesn't really matter. But someone who's not sitting the bench, though, is this guy, Mr. Muck, who is Shookaberry this week because, you know, um, we have this, there's a Pokemon called, uh, what you call it, um, Swampert, who can be very annoying. Very, very, very annoying. We have our Poison Touch ability, 4 attack EVs, 252 special attack, 252 speed with Modest Nature, Giga Drain, Flamethrower, Knock Off, and Poison Jab. And I know some of y'all are probably looking at this like, what in the world is this guy doing? So I want y'all to know one thing. I feel like it, so I plan to lead Muck, and I feel like if I lead Muck and my opponent, he kind of leads Meowskarada a lot. So he does lead Meowskarada, well, we just poison, we can poison jab, and even though we're modest, we can still kill it. <clears throat> but the thing is, knowing my opponent, he's not going to let me poison jab him, which is why I'm going to just go for a knockoff to see what comes in instead. And knockoff can still kill, like, you know, Raichu, who normally can't really touch us anyway. Um, <clears throat> it could still kill Frostlass. Poison jab can still kill the Florages. Y'all yeah, get the idea. Even though we're modest the things we need to hit with knockoff and poison jab we can still potentially kill them with those moves but the reason we're modest max special attack is because i feel like my opponent would try to switch in skarmory or swampert to handle muck because swampert can scare muck out and then skarmory can in theory set up on muck because of iron defense body press but giga drain if he is not AV, because my opponent's AV like almost every week, so you know it's, it's gonna be like a, it's a we're gonna have to see. But is, if he, even if he is AV, we should still do slightly over half with Giga Drain because of Sugar Berry. We don't die to an earthquake, um, and as long as we're above half, we always live our earthquake as well. Um, Flamethrower, always two shots to scum, unless he's like Spadef Investor, which I kind of doubt. Um, earlier in the week, I was thinking about running Extra Belt or Life Orb, but I didn't want to do Life Orb because I don't want to weaken myself for the priority that um, Hit My Top offers. And I also didn't want to do Extra Belt because even with Extra Belt, we never kill Swampert with Giga Drain. We do a lot of chill. Like, if he's not AV, we're easily doing like 90% damage, but 90% is not 100%. So, um, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, so I'd rather just put myself in a situation where I know for a fact, okay, I can two-shot this thing, and I can two-shot Skarmory, which is why we're max speed, because as long as he's not running speed two, we should outspeed both those mods. Definitely the Swamper. Now the Skarmory, now Skarmory is base 70 speed, so we still might be, we'll, we'll be in the same ballpark as a non-invested Skarmory, so it kind of just depends on if he puts, like, little investment or no investment, but that's the reason we decided to run this muck. It is the last game of the season, so I mean, the way I feel about it, if it works, it works. And speaking of, if it works, it works, on to this next guy. Because, well, it ain't like, it ain't the matter of if it works, it works. He's just here. So we are Rocky Helmet Fortress with sturdy ability, 252 HP, Vs4 attack, 252 defense with stealth rock, rapid spin, bolt switch, and T wave. So my opponent does like to set his hazards. He loves them. He almost loves him more than Emerald Miner, but, you know, he's not up there yet. But trust me, my guy loves his hazard. So, you know, when you're a rapid spinner, can't leave home without it. We have Stealth Rock because, well, if we can set, you know, if he will set hazards, we can set hazards too. It's that simple. Volt Switch because um, 
it just gives us a way to pivot out and then T-Wave because he does have a little electric terrain core thing going on, right? If we can T-Wave Iron Moth, now it's slower. I mean, not okay, it won't be slow. If he's on terrain, like if he brings terrain Iron Moth, it'll basically be neutral speed, but it's still slower than the last mod on this list who can kill it 100% of the time, so that's all that matters to me. Um, also, things like the Meow Serata, pretty fast mod, but he can't really kill us either though so once again just t-way for that um and then if raichu if, you know if, if raichu tear us we can catch raichu slipping once again why not you feel me um yeah that's pretty much the thought behind this that's forger it's not really more needs to be said nothing that special next to the onto the next guy is one of our terra captains it's the one the only y'all seen him like for the last three weeks in a row i think Maybe a little more than that, not sure. We got our guy Flygon here. I want to say I brought Flygon every week since... Every week since... I want to say week six onward I brought him. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. But um, Flygon, our guy, expert boat ability because... Was going to run Life Orb. Did not want to do that because, well, yeah, I did not want to... Um, yeah, I didn't want to make myself weaker for this um, Hitmontop who would just love to pick me off. We are Terra Fire this week, 120 HP EVs, 252 Special Attack, 136 Speed EVs, Modest Nature with Earth Power, Flame Thrower, Giga Drain, and Dragon Dance. I'm running Special this week because if not, well, we kind of just get walled by Skarmory. And also, Swampert to a degree can wall us too because, well, it's a Swampert, which is why we're running you get trying to hit Swampert. We can pretty much hit the rest of his team with the combination of Earth Power and Flamethrower. Like, quite literally, the whole team. And since we are a ground type beforehand and then going Terra Fire, we're still getting the stab boost on that Earth Power while also getting the stab on the Flamethrower. So since both those moves can hit into the team outside of... Um, Swampert, well, I mean, Swampert's neutral to Earth Power, but obviously, you'd rather Giga Drain. And then we have Dragon Dance just to help us, you know, outspeed things. With 136 speed EVs, we out. Basically, if we Dragon Dance, we'll outspeed Meow Scarada. Um, we're actually speed creeping Florges because I don't believe Hydreigon is coming. Now, if Hydreigon comes, we will be slower, and that'll just be unfortunate. Albeit, I want to say we're normally going to be slower anyway because if y'all haven't noticed, we've ran modest. Well, we we have not run Jolly all season. We've always ran adamant, so we would normally be slower than a freaking Hydreigon anyway because we're only like three points faster. But y'all get the idea. But yeah, that's Flygon. That not really much more is to be said. On to the next guy. It's the one, the only, Urshifu Rapid Strike, who's rocking his muscle band, Unseen Fist, one hundred twenty. HP EVs, 252 attack, 136 speed, adamant nature with surging strikes, close combat, aqua jet, and swords dance. So the HP investment is primarily just so we so so as things stand, we never die to a um, <clears throat> we never die to a flower trick unless he's banded, which I mean I guess that is like possible, but. As long as he's not banded, we don't ever die to a flower trick. Now, does it do a lot of damage? Yes. Yes, it does. But doing a lot of damage is not the same thing as killing us, as we all know. And because we are muscle banned, we should always kill with um, close combat. And what? Uh, even after they go to, like, yeah, even after they lock themselves into a, um, a uh, what do you call it, a... Um, a grass type we should always we should still always kill this thing and if we can set up a swords dance aqua jet always kills the raichu and the um the iron moth which is why i rock an aqua jet and then surging strike but of course if we're faster than them we can just kill them with uh surging strikes as well and then surging strikes pretty much anything is neutral to it can just do a lot of damage to and then anything is not neutral to like it's a, it's resistant Typically, close combat just hits it anyway. So yeah, y'all get the idea. We only needed these three moves plus our sword stance. And if we somehow can Tailwind, then this guy is actually faster than Iron Moth on terrain, faster than Meow Scarada. The only thing that would outspeed us is a Raichu if it's on terrain. But if Raichu is not on terrain and it's just Scarfed, then, well, we outspeed it because of Tailwind. So, since I didn't mention Tailwind, I think y'all know who my next Pokemon is. The, our other Terra Captain, the one, the only, 
the whimsical Whimsicott, who's rocking his focus sash this week, prankster Tara, where Tara water, so um, I kind of made a little oopsie because I haven't like um, fixed this. So he's 200 HP, he's 100 potential attack, 208 speed. So in game, I made a last second decision to just, just to run max special attack and then put the remaining EVs into my HP. And I did that for two for two reasons. One, this is a focus sash set because I don't expect him to live too long after he comes into the game. He's just here to either A, set Tailwind, or B, set Light Screen. Hopefully both. That's what I prefer because it, my opponent's physical mons, I kind of just have ways to deal with them. But it's the special mons that can go into my team a lot harder. So I would like to be able to set Tailwind to give me the speed and then set light screen so you know if i need to live hits or whatever i have the option i have the capabilities of doing so y'all get the idea and then we have moonblast because moonblast pretty much hits into the entire team there's only two pokemon in this whole team that resist moonblast i mean technically three if you count the terror steel hit them on top but until it terrors well it's not resistant and um yeah you get the idea Moonblast is kind of spammable. And then we have U-Turn to pivot. And yeah, y'all get the idea. Now, if we're, I don't want to ever be in front of Skarmory, but if we're ever in front of Iron Maw, the play is to always light screen and Tailwind. Or Tailwind and light screen. One of the dang two. Because none of my opponent... And oh yeah, we're Terra Water because I feel like if my opponent was in front... If I have Moonblast in front of Iron Moth, he probably wouldn't try to sludge wave me. He would just go for the fiery dance because he knows Terra Steel is an option. So I'll just run... Um, so Terra Waters for that. And then also because Meowskarada might try to triple axe on me, Terra Waters also for that. Now, ideally I prefer to Terra Flygon than Whimsicott, but you know, push comes to shove, we can't beggars can't be choosers, right? But anyway, yeah, that's Whimsicott. And yeah. And then the last one on the team sheet this week is the one to the only, the last but not least, the team mascot himself, Cinderace, who is rocking his heavy duty boots this week because my opponent does like to set his hazards. So if he gets his hazards up, you know, they can be up because our boy's booted. He's booted and don't care. If we have 72 HP, V's, 252 attack, 184 speed, Jolly Nature, Powerball, Zen Headbutt, Sucker Punch, U-Turn. Powerball, because I can kind of just spam it against everything on the team. Except for Swampert and Hydreigon, who, well, Hydreigon will U-Turn on and make his day really hard. And I mean, that's Iron Moth, but... Iron, but take my word for it, Iron Moth does not switch into Powerball. Now, me kill something, then Iron Moth comes in, okay, that's doable. But actually switching into the Powerball, no, that's not a switch in. So, that's why we also have Zen Headbutt, because, well, we we can kind of just click Powerball against every single thing on this team, except for Swampert and um, Iron Moth and Hydreigon, but, you know, Hydreigon, like I said, we U-turn. We have two Giga Drainers on this team for a reason. So yeah, Swampert, Counter Days, and then Zen Headbutt for the one thing we really need it for. And yeah, guys, that's kind of just the team. Ain't no kind of that's the team, but it is the team. So without further ado, let's get into the battle. Your boy has said everything that needs to be said. This is the last week of the BHDL, so after this, you know, we done. But hey, let's at least go out here and try to end it with a bang. Good luck, have fun to the opponent, Chris. Hopefully this battle is a banger. Alright, so he brought... Hmm. Iron Moth, Meowskarada, Florges, Hitmontop, Swampert, and the Raichu. So nothing changes. We still lead with the, um... With the Muck. Yeah, with the Muck. So let me see. The only... There's only three Moths that I... Okay, cool, cool, cool. We still just lead with Muck. Good luck, have fun to the homie, Pokemaster, AKA. Ah, goodness, I'm so, I was trying to say AKA so fast. Good luck, have fun to Pokemaster, AKA. Jesus! Good luck, have fun to Pokemaster 88, also known as Chris, with the disco. There we go. Boom, finally got it out. All right. So yeah, we still just lead a, uh, what we call the guy, um, Muck, boom. Elite Swampert. So we're going to Giga Drain, turn one. Hopefully he's not, uh. Well, we're Sugar Berry, so it's all good. We're just gonna Giga Drain. Boom. A lot of damage. Boom. 
Hmm. Well, now we just, uh, let's knock off. Maybe we should have Giga Drain again so he wouldn't know that we're mixed, but it is what it is at this point. Hmm. Did we speed time? Huh. Didn't know how that worked. But regardless, I think we just knock off again in case for whatever reason he wants to save this thing. It's the first kill. So I wonder who comes in next. Oh, hold up. I need to change some things. Um, he also brought Florges. So actually, the only mod I didn't get right was the was the Florges. I thought Skarmory was gonna be here instead of Florges, but every other mod I uh, more or less thought would come. Meow Scarada. Hmm. Let's just go for a. Uh, what do they what does he go for? Maybe spikes? So you know what, let's go for a Giga Drain here. Oh my. That did a lot. That did a lot. So I wonder who comes in. Probably Iron Moth. If I had to take a guess. Yeah. Are you booster energy? So we're gonna die to this thing, but we have our, um... I wonder, should we just go, um... Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Instead of um, going into Whimsicott right now, we're just going to go into our buddy um, Fortress. And just, uh, we're going to um, T-Wave this thing. Because, like I said, this is what he's here for. To T-Wave things like this. He said, nope. Oh, he's intimidating. So we're gonna, um, Volt Switch out. I think we can just freely go into Cinderace here. Because, well, Power Ball is free. Yeah, Power Ball is free. Could have went for Zen Headbutt there. Ooh, we are getting lucky. Uh, let's just go for Zen Headbutt now. Uh, 
Okay. Hit him on top is down. I feel so bad because of the para hacks. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. But he probably just goes me out Skarada here, and if he does, we just go back into Fortress. It's this girl. Hmm. Do I want to find out? This could be good for information because I don't think. Ugh, can Maple one shot us with like Shadow Ball or something? Let's U turn out and see what happens. Sheesh, I did not expect that. Um, who's left? We have Florges, Iron Moth, and Meow Scarada, so hmm. let's go into you actually. At least we don't have to worry about Terra anymore. Um, we're gonna T wave this thing and then go into Flygon after it kills us. Excuse me. <clears throat> or better yet, nah. We're gonna go into Urshifu after it kills us. Um, we're gonna die. Yeah. Down goes Fortress, but Homie accomplished his only mission for the most part, which was to, um, well, um, T wave things. Alright. Now we go into this guy and just click Searching Strikes. That's one for Ursh. Now, according to my calculations, as long as this thing is not banded, we should live a hit. As long as it's not banded, we should live a hit. Oh, he got me with this one. He got me. He definitely got me. Him and his tricks. Him and his tricks. Him and his tricks. My guy and his tricks. Okay. So we're not choice locked in anything, so let's go into you now. Women gets us gets the flash her perm. She gets to flash her perm. Okay. 
Let's go for a U-turn. So we had the same thought. We had the same thought. So I'm gonna go back out into um, Urshifu. Go back out into Urshifu. That's annoying. <laughs> That's annoying. All right, and now we just go for surging strikes. Go into our guy. You gotta hit your uh, what you call it? You go, Cinderace. And now it's mascot versus mascot. Let's see what he got for us. Let's see what he got for us. GG's to the homie Chris. I'm very happy I could close the season out with you. Good luck in the playoffs, man. You really, you've been playing good all season and you really earned it. The paralysis definitely helped me, but you've been playing good all season and you definitely earned your spot in the playoffs. And yeah, just go out there and kick ass, dude. I really believe in you. You got one job now. Make it to the finals, win it. No pressure, though. You got this. Anyway, any um, everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so, please remember to like and subscribe. Actually, just do that right now, please. Actually, yes, that would help a lot. Please, thank you. But, yeah, until next time, peace out. And once again, really glad I could close the season out with you, my guy.